Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. In this video, I'm going to be showing you an example on how to design a lintel. A lintel is essentially a structural element which spans over a window opening or a door opening. The design of a lintel is different to the design of a normal beam, and that's because we're supporting masonry. And essentially, masonry can arch, which affects how the load is spread onto the structural element or the beam or the lintel. You can obviously get away with designing a lintel as a beam, but any experienced engineer will quickly be able to see that it's been over-designed. In this example, we have a 1.8 meter wide opening where the lintel height is 2.1 meters above ground level and the first floor is 0.9 meters above the lintel. The first floor is gonna be made out of timber and the masonry wall which we're supporting with the lintel is gonna be a cavity lintel made up of 100 brick and 100 block. We're going to assume that the brickwork is going to have a density of 22 kilonewtons per meter cubed and the blockwork density is going to be 18 kilonewtons per meter cubed. The timber floor is going to have a dead weight of 0.9 kilonewtons per meter squared and a live load of 1.5 kilonewtons per meter squared. The timber floor is going to span 4 meters. So it's also a good idea to draw a quick section sketch just to make sure that you 100% know what you're designing. Once you've done the sketch, just copy it into your calcs. So in lintel design, there's two things you really need to know. One is called the interaction zone and the other is called the loaded triangle. So the loaded triangle is at a 45 degree angle from where the opening ends. Only the self weight of the masonry needs to be considered when you're looking at the loaded triangle. Half of any point or distributed load applied to the masonry within the interaction zone is carried by the lintel at 60 degrees. So now what we want to do is just work out some dimensions. I'm going to mark on where the timber floor is, which is just above the loaded triangle and in the interaction zone. We need to calculate the amount of timber floor which is acting on the lintel and we're going to denote that with the letter L. We also need to calculate the height of the loaded triangle and also the height of the interaction zone and we're going to denote that by H1 and H2. Using simple trigonometry we can calculate H1 and H2. Again using simple trigonometry we can calculate X and then L. just to recap on what the loaded triangle is and what the interaction zone is. So first in the loaded triangle, let's calculate the area of a triangle, which comes to 0.81 meters squared. Then we calculate the brick and the block load by simply multiplying the area by the appropriate density. Add the loads together and then spread by the lintel length. In the interaction zone, we're only considering the floor and not the self weight of the brickwork. So we need to multiply the floor by the length L, which we calculated earlier of 0.76 meters. Once we add the loads together, we need to remember that only 50% of the load in the interaction zone is applied to the lintel, so we need to divide by two. Then we can spread the load over the lintel length, like we did before. I actually forget to multiply by half the span, which was four over two. So all the values here need to be times by two. Then we can add all the loads together and work out the total load on the lintel. Because the lintels themselves aren't actually designed by us, they're designed by someone else, you can go onto the Catnick lintel website and look at their load span tables. I'm selecting an extra heavy duty lintel and then checking the self working load against the total load which we just calculated on our lintel. It's good practice to copy the load span table and into your calculation page. So we need to check that the safe working load is appropriate for the length of our lintel. We know that our lintel is spanning over an opening of 1.8 meters. Therefore, we need to check against a safe working value of 60 kilonewtons. What we calculated earlier was the load in kilonewtons per meter. So all we need to do is multiply by the length of the lintel to get the total load in kilonewtons. So we get a total load of 33 kilonewtons, which is obviously less than 60. Therefore, this lintel works. Hopefully you found this video useful. Lintel design is very, very simple, but equally useful. If you work on a lot of refurbishment projects, you'll find that you'll be using a lot of lintel design. And in those situations, you won't really be using Katnik lintels, but you'll be using precast lintels. But the design process is exactly the same. You'll just be checking against load span tables for precast lintels instead. 
thanks for watching and if you've got any questions please let me know. Please remember to like and subscribe and I'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.